because last month I'm proud to say that our short film is called Opa Weekend won one of the prestigious film festivals here in our city so Opa Weekend is a Cebuano Korean film written by Tracy Tang my co-director it's a play of words Opa is really Korean and Pa Weekend is a Filipino word for sea turtle like like the story of the sea turtle he no matter where he goes he always comes back home so that's basically you know the story of the film a boy who wants to go home really proud of what we have done because it was a crazy experience but really one of the most unforgettable shoots we've done so far this is my first time to shoot again after two years and i just can't wait to start sharing with you eight major lessons action so I'm sharing these filmmaking tips, lessons, ideally to people who are beginning filmmakers who are beginning to shoot their like first short film or have shot a few short films and want to up their game. So the first lesson is coming from one of our struggles. I mean, it's not a mistake, but one of our um, struggles during the shoot. And that is, I, as always, as always, pre-production is the secret sauce. The funny thing about this film, it was everything came into place like a week before the shoot. On the day of the shoot, we don't have, this is, this is really embarrassing. We didn't have any call sheets and the script we had was what we call a working script. How we survived that and pulled it off was, was crazy. And I'm gonna share it to you at the end how we survived that. But let me just reiterate, if this is your first film or second or third, please, really really take time to pre-prod to really plan get the script done get good casting and spend really more time on pre-production because it's gonna save you a lot of time during the show miss debbie Hello. the mommy <laughs> the mommy the mommy <laughs> of course why our one and only korean actor <laughs> that can speak Mustafa. <laughs> So the second lesson has something to do when you're dealing with actors who are new. You know, friends you think can act and you invite them to join in your short film. In the real world, we would have rehearsals or um, script reading, but we didn't have the luxury of time. In location, before we shot anything, I got the two actors and we did connection exercises. So these connection exercises, the main goal is for our actors to break their barriers and we want them to be as comfortable as possible with each other we want to hack their relationship to be as real as it is in the movie so we did a number of exercises a few to mention was i had them look at each other eye to eye for quite a long time which is awkward at first but when you get to feel it you know it started to really work and then hold hands embrace and i just want that intimacy to start to build as a mother and a child in the film and it really worked because our first shot was the second to the last scene. Yes, we did that. When we, and then when we ran the scene, it was really, really smooth. And we got the connection of both the actors. And number three, if you're a new filmmaker, always aim to work with professionals. I've shot quite a number of short films where we're only like three people, three man crew. So then this time we have really an all professional crew with us. It's something that is really contrasting to when I was starting shooting short films. We have camera department, we have sound department. Like for example, when you have a production design team, your costumes are there, your props are there. I'm sharing this because I feel the sentiment when you are start, starting filmmaker and you have just friends as your crew. So when you, when you will have the opportunity, when you have the break, always to start dreaming to work with a professional crew. Oh, 
second day shooting our film entitled <laughs> Ang Turtle Nawa Ka Turtle and this is the BTS and if you look at here oh. setting up for all the scenes in the beach Lesson 4, this is very basic but I just want to stress this over and over again to always do blocking and rehearsals If you're a new director and if you really dream of becoming a director blocking rehearsals is your game, it's your court that's where you grow. Blocking and rehearsal is very important, not just for the actors, but just for the entire crew. That's where the DP knows where to position himself, where to light. And for actors at the time where they would flow through their dialogue and you will just see magic happens there, especially if they have insights, listen to your actors. So during the shoot, like I said, we had a working script. So doing the blockings, doing the rehearsals really, really safe. It even made the scene even better. You will see things you didn't see in your head, but when you, and but when the actors start to deliver their line, you'd have insights and you could still tweak it. Again, before shooting a scene, before even lighting and positioning everyone, do rehearsals. It would really, really up your game. So this is the director right there. Yeah, she's Tracy. <laughs> What's your name? Tracy. You are? It's the director. <laughs> So number five, because we're talking about blocking in rehearsals, is I want to talk about the actor's business. Your actor's business, I mean not business entrepreneurship, I mean business is what would sometimes I call the busyness. What's keeping your actors busy at the scene? That's business. This is something that would really set you apart from newbie directors. Sometimes you would see films where you feel kind of off. It's when you see actors just standing there and delivering their lines. They lack what? They lack business. I remember shooting a documentary where the father and his daughter were having a fight. I mean, we're not in good terms, they were arguing with each other. At that time, the father was hammering, was fixing a chair, and then his daughter was at the side crying, packing her things. And when I saw that, scene you know it was just so natural so raw and I just realized how cinematic that scene was for me and that's basically what business is like in our film we have them picking trash or drinking water well during the scene it just feels natural so when you're creating a scene I really recommend you to consider to give your actors a business number six is something I've learned over the years, which I really didn't care much before. That is to connect your scenes. Like during the shoot, before I block or start a scene, I would ask the DP or our AD, what was the last shot? What was the actor's direction during the previous shot of the scene? So that when we open the scene, when we start the new scene, it flows. Like if the previous scene, your actor exits camera left, so he enters this scene, camera right. These are really small details, but when you put them together in edit, it, it just gives a more natural flow through your film. Okay, number seven is pretty general, but I just would want to put it out there. Filmmaking is problem solving. Filmmaking is basically, you have a scene in your head and you have a bunch, a ton of problem on how to get that scene come to life. Like during our shoot for the short film, we had tons of problems. Transportation, we didn't even have complete actors at the time. We have to look for foreigners. It was raining so hard. We, did, we didn't expect that to happen. We didn't expect the rain and we were only there in the island for two days. There were so many problems, but it's I guess it's because of experience shooting films. I mean, this is our life. This is our livelihood. This is our work. You've come to have your mind rewired for filmmaking. And before I share the last one, here's Davin showing us what transpired like two hours before the deadline for the film festival. We only have four hours left to do, to finish everything. We haven't rendered, we haven't bought the CD yet. That's our director. The director. This one is our cinematographer. This is the first AD right here slash CGI artist, slash animator, and slash... There you go. Oh my god, imagine! In the original video that we took, we don't have turtles in there. 
but now you can see turtles and it's moving, right? Downstairs, we'll go back, okay? Let's check out hands. So we only have like two hours and 20 minutes left before the submission. And here we are. Joni, she's still working on the credits. <laughs> Doing sound. Guy. Yeah. Kaya pa? And lastly, number eight, as I said in number one, it was a difficult shoot and how we survived. My answer is because of a committed team. Like during the shoot, I really felt that there was no ego involved. People were there to make a good film. No ego, no agenda, no selfish motives, no one complaining. And I guess with having that kind of people working with you, like what our director Tracy said, you know, the universe would just conspire, like the planets and the stars align to give you what you need. We had so many mini miracles along the way. The whole universe supported us because we were a bunch of creatives, a bunch of people who are really passionate but also had the discipline to make it happen. So they just provided everything and we were able to make one really good short film. So that's it. Hopefully those eight lessons would you know, take you somewhere. You'd learn something new today and I'm happy I was able to share our experiences with that. If you've reached this far in the video, thank you so much means a lot and I hope that I'll be able to share more of these experiences, more behind the scenes, more insights as long as I can, even with this super crazy schedule. Yeah, if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to add and then if you want to share this video, please do. And I hope you can still join me with you in the creative life. <laughs>